Our story this week is called Fossils, A Peek Into the Past. Big news came out of Fairbanks, Alaska in the fall of 2007. A 10-year-old boy named Jared Post had made a fantastic find. While walking home from school, Jared noticed a big, jagged rock half buried in the ground. Instantly curious, he dug the rock out. He noticed that it had what he called weird engravings on its underside. Jared felt pretty sure he had found something special, a fossil. The young student's hunch was right. After bringing the toaster-sized object home, Jared and his dad searched the internet for information. They discovered that the strange rock was in fact the tooth of a woolly mammoth, a giant mammal that lived during the Ice Age. The Ice Age occurred between 1.6 million and 10,000 years ago. In other words, that tooth was old. And the caption says, this huge mammoth tooth Jared Post found weighed seven pounds. Jared is deciding whether to keep the tooth or donate it to a museum. This drawing of a woolly mammoth was found on a cave wall in France. Traces of the past. Today, mammoths are extinct, meaning they no longer exist. Scientists can learn about them only by studying whatever remains they can find, such as bones, tusks, and teeth. Animal teeth give a lot of information. By studying teeth, scientists can make a good guess about an animal's diet. Carnivores or meat-eating animals have sharp canine teeth to stab and hold on to prey. Herbivores are plant eaters, so they have large molars for chewing plants. Although mammoths roam throughout much of North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa, their bones and teeth are found mainly in areas with very cold weather. Any ideas why? It's because bones and teeth buried in frozen ground are less likely to be damaged. It's not surprising that Jared's mammoth tooth lasted 10,000 years or more. In his hometown of Fairbanks, of Fairbanks, Alaska, the temperature stays below freezing more than half the year. The pointed teeth of carnivores are much different than herbivore teeth. Imagine a woolly mammoth. For about two million years, woolly mammoths roamed the northern plains of Europe, North America, and Asia. Then, about 10,000 years ago, they disappeared, leaving only fossilized clues to their presence. Thought to be early ancestors of today's elephants, these giant beasts were covered in dense, shaggy hair. A thick layer of fat protected them from the cold. Teeth, such as the one Jared discovered, probably a molar, indicates they were grass and leaf eaters. They used their long, curved tusks, scientists believe, to shovel snow off the ground to reach buried plants. Mammoths weighed about six to eight tons and stood about nine feet tall. Imagine an animal standing about as high as a one-story house and weighing as much as three or four full-size pickup trucks. Just thinking about mammoths walking around my neighborhood 10,000 years ago is amazing, Jared Post told reporters. So you see anywhere that has a red dot is a mammoth fossil sites so we can see where there are more dots of course those are more dense areas where we would find mammoths or at least the fossils of them. Here's North Carolina so there's not too many spots um, for us. Dots on this map show some of the major North American sites where mammoth fossils have been found. One girl's remarkable finds. Another super successful young fossil hunter was Mary Anning, who was born on the south coast of England. Mary got quite a head start on recent fossil finders. She discovered the skeleton of a giant sea creature when she was about 11 years old. That was in 1810. Scientists had never seen anything like the bones Mary found. They named it Ichthyosaurus from the Greek words for fish and lizard but it was not a fish at all. Later research proved it to be the fossilized body of a giant sea reptile. Mary got credit for finding the very first ichthyosaur fossil, but she discovered others as well. In 1821, she found two, one five feet long and the other almost 20 feet long. These discoveries started a fossil craze in England. 
Three-year-old Caleb Kidd in La Crosse, Wisconsin holds the woolly mammoth tooth that he found. A very good year. Jared wasn't the only young discoverer to come across a mammoth's tooth in 2007. It was a great year for finds. In February, 16-year-old Sierra Sardi Sweeney found a tooth in Tampa, Florida. And in November, little Caleb Kidd discovered a, a mammoth tooth in La Crosse, Wisconsin. At three years old, Caleb might be the youngest fossil finder ever. The coastal area where Mary lived was, and still is, full of fossils. Most of these are the remains of animals that lived in the seas between 206 and 144 million years ago, a time known as the Jurassic period. The ichthyosaurus was from this time when dinosaurs roamed the earth, but Mary was also the first to discover the remains of another Jurassic sea creature. This skeleton, found in 1823, was equally large and strange. The fossil measured nine feet long and six feet wide. Compared to its giant body, its head was tiny, not quite five inches long. The creature was named Plesiosaurus, meaning almost like a lizard. Mary Anning's fossils gave scientists new knowledge about the world. Nature's memory keepers. A fossil is the remains of a plant or an animal that lived a long time ago. The word fossil, oops, the word fossil was first used in the 1500s. It comes from a Latin word that means dug up from the ground. The most common kind of fossil is an imprint or outline of the plant or animal in a rock. These kinds of fossils are formed in much the same way as a handprint in clay. Other kinds of fossils include animal bones and footprints, or even a trail left by a worm. Fossils might be called nature's memory keepers because they show what once was. They're little, or sometimes big, pieces of history. Because fossils give us clues about extinct plants and animals, they help us understand what the world was like in the distant past. Here's an example in the picture. A fossil of a wading bird found in Wyoming. Mary learned her skills as a fossil hunter from her father. He showed her how to increase the value of her finds by cleaning them with a needle and a small brush, then polishing them. After her father died, Mary's sale of her fossil finds helped keep the family going. Her dedication to this work made her famous as an expert on fossils. Because she was only a young girl and not a trained scientist, Mary's knowledge of fossils was almost unbelievable to people of her time. One person wrote that Mary had the knowledge to easily talk with professors and other clever men on the subject, and they all admit she understands more of the science than anyone else in the kingdom. No wonder Mary Anning has been called the greatest fossilist the world ever knew. Here's a plesiosaurus fossil.